Uh, yeah. First of all, being out here doing this for Sharon, obviously you weren't around then, but to just yeah. kind of see all the veteran players come back and stuff, your thoughts on that? Well, you know, the Clemson community, man, athletic, academia, it's all ties together collectively, man. And it's such a special group of people. Anytime somebody reaches out, as long as I got the time for it, I'm gonna try to make sure I come out and support that. Uh, Mr. Wright, man, from what I hear, was just an outstanding human being. Obviously a dog on the court, man. And, uh, you know, this is an unfortunate situation for what it is, but at least he gets to see the Clemson community rally around him, and that's special. For you, um, obviously you, you and CJ can't go around the team right now yeah. and all that. How, how, first of all, how difficult is that, not being able to go out there right now? It is, you know, because at one point I thought I was gonna be Jake Glazer out here and get the inside information. You know? <laughs> no, 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 nothing like that. Um, you know, it's just a whole protocol and it's a procedure and, and that's something that I respect, um, you know, and when you talk about you know, what's happening within that, the, the steps that they're taking, the precautions to make sure that everybody's playing in a safe environment, I think that's how you assure that college football happens. Now, the scary part is what happens when a student comes back, right? Mm -hmm. We saw bubbles and how they can operate, the NBA, the MLB, the NFL, you know, training camp environment. College is a little bit different being that you still are, are a student, you know, and the fact that you have to communicate, coexist with a student body. Trying to keep you separate from them is the challenge there. And hopefully, the same way that these athletes want people to be accountable for their, we gotta hold these athletes accountable for their group too going forward. For for you, like, um, I know that the team come out and they voted yeah. against uh, the social media ban. Right. You were on the team in the yeah. 11 when it first started. Yeah. Your thoughts on that, and then also kind of relay it to why you guys started that way back then um you know we just felt like at the time and there were some things there were some mishaps there you know something i tweeted out something a couple of guys tweeted out something you got guys that were worried about more or less about taking pictures for instagram or or, or twitter at the time more than they were about the game itself and so we just felt like it was an unneeded distraction and so you know if those guys feel like they can handle it they can handle it the problem is, is that it only takes one and so that's why I was a little weary of it. But again, this is a new group. Um, you know, this is a unique time, especially when you talk about everything that's been happening, whether it's COVID, whether it's social injustices. So the avenues and opportunities that they got to speak on these topics and people listen is really important and really special. But you got to make sure that it's clean across the board. And the NIL too. I mean. NIL coming up. So, I mean, it's uh, college football. The, the, the NCAA in itself um, is changing right before our eyes. Uh, I don't necessarily know where it's headed, but I know that it won't be the same. And so I'm, I'm, I'm interested and excited to see what happens going forward. Uh, because, again, you know, when you look at, you know, what's happening with the petitions, with some conferences playing, with some not, we're already starting to see the floor fall beneath us a little bit within the NCAA, and then you start adding in a few other things. And, you know, at that point, you know, it just could be, it could be the Autobahn out here. Todd, what do you think of the, Players Association, union, name, name, image, and likeness talk. Like you're a guy who sure. could have really benefited from something like that. I would yeah, say. the uh, I tell you what, I actually think that that's strong. Um, I think as long as the right people are in position and that they get together collectively to understand, you know, what voices need to be heard, have some real life uh, mandates and some provisions going forward. I think it could be outstanding. Look, there's a lot of bright, bright athletes out there, man, who understands things at a very high level. You know, some of these kids that are 18, 19 years old have the experiences of people that are 40, 50. And so within that, you know, they see the world in a different vantage point than people that sometimes spectate. And so making sure that they understand what they're asking for, though, and be able to find some middle ground is the deal right there, right? And uh, as long as they can come together, right, find some unison within the conversation and the dialogue going forward, I don't see it hurting anything. Do you think at all, like, about how much you could have made or like what it would have been like if you were playing in this era, with, uh, if you had that kind of stuff? Somebody did a study one time and you know, it was like, I don't know, they said, I contributed like $2 million, Colin contributed like $2.5 million to Carolina. I mean, at the end of the day, I will say, I mean, it was pretty cool to, you know, look up in the stands and see people wear the jerseys. Yeah. Um, so hopefully that is one of those deals that they, they bring it back to. Video game is another measurement and I don't know <laughs> necessarily where that's heading, but, you know, as far as, uh, you know, the, the opportunities within itself, I've always thought that a player's marketing ability was greater here than it was any other place. Uh, simply because when you're talking about these spaces collectively, these small towns, you are the star there. Once you jump into that pool of NFL players, even with all the superstardom around them, we're still only talking about five or six guys that really get the bulk of that. So the opportunity here uh, magnifies itself at a greater 
you know, capacity than it will anywhere else. And so, you know, I'm excited to see what that looks like going forward. It's also scary too, because we don't know, you know, what that even looks like. You know, guys that used to have to come through the back door are now walking through the front door. And so you got that, you got agents, you got so many different things that are still, regardless of the situation, gonna have to have some restrictions going forward. You know, when I went on my official visit to Oregon, you know, what would it have been at that time if, you know, Phil Knight said, hey, you know, we're going to guarantee you a two, three year Nike deal, you know, straight off the back. So, like, it's, it's, it's so many different things. It hurts places that are small markets. It helps, you know, universities that are in great markets, you know. Why would you not want to go out to L.A.? And so being able to make sure that it's, it's a, bit, a level playing field is going to be the tricky part going forward, but I'm confident that it'll get handled. Also, I would imagine it's important from a – from a player standpoint, because right. obviously the second team offensive lineman, left guard, right. is not going to get the same attention the starting quarterback has. Right, has. and so it can cause some divisiveness within it. Um, you know, I think it's a little different than, you know, NFL big contracts um, simply because, you know, somebody is, at least somebody's, they're all getting something <clears throat> to that degree. Now, performance, you know, performance, if you perform at a high level, you're going to have, you know, a greater opportunity to create capital for yourself. Um, again, within that, though, you know, you got to ask yourself a question. Clemson has been able to build this program around community, around developing men. And so when parents come forward, when they're making these decisions, you know, they're going to say, hey, you know, do we want to continue to, to, to make sure that our players are getting the best experience or we're going to get the most capital? And so that's where it becomes an arms race at. Go play golf.